Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Doug Dexter with Cisco Systems, the uh, audit team lead for the Corporate Information Security Department. And today I'll be describing Cisco's journey, if you will, into vulnerability management where we went from basically nothing through what we ended up procuring, through deployment, and we end out with a slice of compliance and hopefully I'll give you folks, I'll help you guys not bump into the same problems that we had over the past five years. So to get started, I'm very lucky. This is, uh, it, it's my quasi food chain as I like to think of it. We're not actually in the IT department here with Becky, but our boss dotted lines to Rebecca Jacoby, the CIO. Uh, hopefully you guys got to see John Chambers speak today. It was a very good speech. Uh, I think he challenged a lot of people with thinking about how things work and how things are. It's always very nice when he wanders around saying just how important security is and make it so and I'm one of the poor guys rowing the boat trying to figure out how I'm going to make it so, but all right, well, I guess we'll see where it all ends up at the end. Um, Brad is our government group, so they don't know where to put information security, so we food chain up through the government group, up through the COO operations, and then up to John. But what I'm saying, I'm lucky, from the top on down, security is actually very important to the corporation. and. You know, we don't have arguments about resourcing and a little bit about budget, but again, very nice to have the support from the senior management. Now as I move into this, this is Cisco in one slide, okay? It's a fairly complex environment. I just kind of like looking at that one and going, wow, that's, that's a big place. That, that's a little odd. And, and clearly, this is not really how it looks. It looks much more like a squashed bug when you actually see all the devices. This is a, a, just a representation of where everything goes. Now the big areas here, we're hovering around 99,000 contractors, employees, and you guys probably have the same identity management issues that we have with contract employees, vendors, real employees, uh, service employees, people who just wander in and out of the buildings and do odd jobs for you that have to have, uh, my favorite are the wiring guys, the guys who have the wiring closet and they've got a badge to everywhere in the corporation and you're wondering, they're the guys you find who are propping the doors open to the data center, because one of them has the badge, either seven don't, but they're climbing either in the, they're either in the raised floor or they're up in the ceiling, one of the two, and it's just, what are you guys doing? You could, oh, we work for, you know, the local wiring company, whoever it may be. A little difficult trying to keep track of physical and logical security when you don't even have control of who's walking in and out of the data centers. As we keep moving, We've got 100 plus acquisitions to date. One of the responsibilities of my team is the uh, acquisition, if you will, triage. We show up, we go to the acquisitions. Uh, one of my guys was with Title Networks, or is it Title? I think it's Title Network, Title something or other. It's the latest company we've just purchased. And they're there right now, going over the network, physical, logical security, where things are at, with an effort to how are we going to bolt that acquisition somewhere onto the big slide here, because they have to connect somehow. Sometimes they move inside, they just move into a Cisco buildings. Other times, there's another little router connected off to the end that's another circuit that's moving out, and did we just, who's connected to the back end of their network, and did I just open a giant hole into the back end of Cisco? So, when you, I'm trying to, you know, level this down, as we move down, John showed up, now John was an old Cisco guy, right, way back when, and we all knew him back then. He went on to Digital Island, then Digital Island got absorbed by, was it, cable and wireless. And then after that, we were looking for C CISO, CSO type, and John came back. So it's kind of funny to have John back. One of the first things he did was he said, you guys aren't going to be information security anymore. We're going to be the corporate security programs office. And of course, we all looked at him and went, to what? Because that didn't make a lot of sense. At that point, you know, I, I was 11 years ago, there was about four of us when I was hired. We moved up to 10, and there was another bump up to like 24, stuff like that. We were InfoSec. And the thought that we're not going to be InfoSec anymore, we're going to be this other corporate security programs office. Yeah, I'm not getting it. We've got a brand, brand identity based around InfoSec. People know who we are. They know who to call. They're not going to get the CSPO thing at all. Well, of course, I'm not an executive. Over time, of course, we have an information asset protection, the global investigations, e-litigation, the security evaluation office. These guys, the role for this group is to make all the coders at Cisco, if we've got something like 40, 50,000, these 12 guys have to make the rest of Cisco write secure code, right? Where do you put that team? The corporate security programs office. So now, however many years later, okay, I get it. 
I understand that you've got the traditional information security team, architecture, governance, audit, incident response, but you've got the, all these other guys over here too, okay? So here's my team. Uh, my boss is in Research Triangle Park with me and my PM named Mike. I've got two loaners, a guy named Ben Lee, and uh, Ben is part of the intellectual asset protection. It's kind of an odd thing, but we've got people looking at, at our intellectual assets. Joss is part of the counterfeit protection team. So I get loaners from that as we're doing assessments, trying to figure out, well, do we have an issue with counterfeits? Amy and Bob are here. Well, actually, Amy's in Campbell and Bob's in Tracy, so neither one are here today. <laughs> but as we keep moving out, I've got Muhitten Coach by Enderin, Hans van der Molen. Now, there's going to be a quiz later, so I'll say it again. Muhitten Coach by Enderin and Hans van der Molen. Okay, so I, I make sure you got those. All right. And then as we move out across the world, I've got Sutsuko Yagi-san here in Japan, and she's an amazing PM. And I've got Alex a.k.a. Drake, a.k.a. whatever the word is for Alex now, Japanese, because his fiance is Japanese, and he's going by that name now. He's changed his name three times. It's actually quite confusing when you say Alex. No, you mean Drake. No, you mean whatever the other name was. Anyway, now I've been stealing Jitendra, because every time we acquire a company, there's always some level of, uh, pardon me, coding development. Sorry about that. Coding development in India or in China. So I've been stealing support from India and China from other teams. I just got word last week that we're going to get the new hire in China and a new hire in India. So I know for a lot of folks, things are ramping down. It's actually ramping up for us. We're going to get two more people. I don't know how I'm going to manage this many people around the world or when we're going to have any team meetings, but I guess we'll have to figure that out. So it works out to six full-time, five part-time, and the two special owner guys. So try to give you that to give an idea of what Cisco's like, how big the team is, you know, where we're located, things like that. And I'd like to go into our journey with the vulnerability scanning, vulnerability management at Cisco. 